Y'all, it is time to stop doing quite a few things with your Cricut. Today we're gonna break down what every single one of them are, and these will totally surprise you. So if you're excited, stick around. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, and let's jump into it. To kick off the things you need to stop doing with your Cricut, I wanna take you to the Cricut machine. How many times have you been cutting your material and you just simply unload your machine? Well, guess what? When you unload your machine, there's now no way to double check if this actually cut through or not. So let me share with you what you should do instead. Now, what I want you to do every single time when you cut out something using your Cricut, before you unload it, here's what you wanna do. You want to look at your design and you want to somehow decide what corner you're gonna simply pick up and make sure it cut through. So simply by looking at this corner, I'm like, oh, my letter cut through perfect. Now that it cut through all the way, I can unload the machine and have my mat and start weeding it. What you need to make sure about is that it cut through properly, because here's what's gonna happen. If for some reason you look at it and you're like, oh man, this didn't cut through all the way. No big deal. You can press the flashing cricket button again and what it will do is go through and cut your decal out again at the same spot we have tested doing this if you unload the mat and for some reason the cricket cannot line up exactly again where it cut but as long as you leave it loaded into the machine our results have found that it will cut exactly where it did previously and it'll make sure you have the best cut result and you'll be able to weed it really easily. So now let's go ahead and unload it. A lot of you are starting to just simply weed the project as soon as it comes out. I want you to stop. Stop doing this with your Cricut. Stop weeding this little piece and wasting all this material. Do this instead. Grab your craft knife and I want you to cut out about a half an inch away from the design. So give about a quarter to a half an inch from the design and cut it out with your craft knife because look what this will save you. You will now have all of this extra material that you almost wasted. Don't do that. Notice how we put down a large piece, let the Cricut cut, then we cut away our excess. This will give you more extra instead of trying to cut it before it cuts. Just don't do that. Save it and wait till the end until after it cuts and cut it out. Now, after you do that, you may be saying, Tanner, it's time to weed. Stop doing that too. You need to stop going straight for weeding the project when you're cutting vinyl. Do this instead. So instead of going straight to weeding your vinyl, here's what you need to do instead. Since you just cut with the Cricut, you've actually irritated the vinyl. So what you need to do is push the vinyl back down onto the backer. So you wanna grab a burnishing tool and you just wanna burnish. You just wanna burnish away and make sure the vinyl is stuck down to the backer. So now, after you burnish, you can go ahead and weed. It'll be a lot easier now. Look at how easy it is to weed vinyl now that you burnished. In one swoop, it was that easy to peel this up and you have it right here. How about that? Now I'm gonna go in and weed out the small pieces and it'll be super quick. And just like that, look how great it weeded. I mean, I'm telling you, taking these few simple steps will save you time, will save you material, and save you effort to get amazing results just like this. Next up, I want you to stop eyeballing your designs. And here's what I mean by that. The design we just cut out, we eyeballed it. But look right here. I've added some transfer tape to it. We're about to apply it onto this blank. And look, here, this is a perfect example of things that I see what you all are doing in our Facebook group and on Instagram and things like that. You're eyeballing designs. You're like, oh, okay, you know, this right here is you know, probably like four inches, right? And then you'll cut out your design four inches by eyeballing it. But look right here. If we take this and apply it down, just like this, we're applying it down, we can burnish it, something like this, burnish, burnish, and then we peel it back. And then I wanna show you what happens when you're eyeballing. And I have something I want you to do instead, of course. So I want you to stop eyeballing. And y'all, we really need to talk about this. If you are just taking blanks, taking wood, and just eyeballing in design space, you gotta stop doing it. You've gotta grab your tape measure. 
okay? Grab your tape measure, and I want you to actually measure it. Measure how much space you actually have to apply a design. So you can do this with this design and be like, okay, I have, you know, six by, let's say, five. You have six by five that you could easily put a rectangle decal. Instead, I eyeballed it three and a half by four inches and look, my friend, it shows. So I want you to stop eyeballing and I want you to measure twice and cut once. That is one tip that I learned very early in my Cricut career and I always love doing it so that I make sure my decals fit my design really well. Now for shapes like this hexagon right here, I have an even better and efficient way for you to do it. Instead of worrying about trying to figure out how much space you can put a decal, go ahead, measure the full size of the hexagon and let me share with you what I do in design space. Let's jump over to Cricut Design Space and I'll show you. So right here in Cricut Design Space, I was able to punch in the exact size of my hexagon, which for this is 8.95 by 7.75. And this allows me to then bring in my decal with a font, cut fall, whatever it is, and size it as large as it can go for this exact hexagon. This is a great example of how I bring my Cricut projects to life inside of Cricut Design Space really easily so that I make sure I don't waste any material and that it'll end up looking perfect. Y'all, I want you to stop not kerning your letters. I see so many amazing Cricut projects that if these letters were kerned, they would look store-bought. But a lot of us simply do not know the process of kerning. So today I want to invite you to start kerning your letters for every single vinyl project. Now I will note that Cricut a lot of times now will try to manually kern your letters automatically so you don't manually have to, but I'm going to share with you if a font for some reason didn't kern properly, didn't kern at all, or you need to manually kern your letters, I'll share with you that. So come over here to Cricut Design Space and you can see the bottom has already been kerned. What you'll want to do, there's a few ways to kern letters. I'm gonna share with you the easiest way, which is using what's called letter space. Letter space is just going to simply bring your letters closer or further apart. So if you go down, you can see they will quickly come closer together. And now you can see how close they should be to touch and this is the process of kerning. Now some fonts to perfect this you will want to zoom in even more and we are actually going to do a process that is called ungrouping to each letter will be its own layer. So what we're going to do is we are quickly going to have this selected. We're going to go to advanced and we're going to click ungroup to letters. Watch the layers panel after I ungroup these to letters. You're going to see that each letter is now its own layer, which is going to help you out a lot. So now we can select the H and just move it over a little, move it down, and we can manually position each of these. Now that I like the position of the H to the E, I will select the H and the E and bring it down and over to touch the L. Now I will select these first three letters and move it a little bit. And now I'll perfect my O just with some manual kerning, just like that. And now I'll select all of these layers and I will go ahead and go combine and I will go weld. Now this is all together and I'll be able to apply it to an amazing project. Do you see how this looks so much better than previously when all the letters were separated, spaced out, and didn't look like someone truly hand lettered them? That's what we don't want. You always wanna manually kern your letters if they do not look kerned. There's two ways to do it. The letter space way, which a lot of times will do it manually um, really quickly because you're just gonna bring it together and it'll look perfect. But some fonts like this one, Amber Light from Makers Gonna Learn, you will need to give it a little extra love to make it perfect. And always be sure to weld those together so that it'll always cut as one image. Please stop trying to cut four or five different mats when you have some really basic cuts that you could actually have done on one mat. You're just gonna use different colors. Let me share with you this example. I have four hearts right here on Cricut Design Space. They're going to be four different colors. What you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna actually want to color sync 
all to one layer. So you could color sync this all to the blue layer. So you're gonna grab the heart after you click on color sync and you're just gonna color sync them all to blue. But here's the secret. After you've color synced them all to one color, you're gonna to want to click make it. And you're going to see that each heart is now set up to cut all at the top um, of the mat. You're gonna now manually drag each heart to a different corner of the mat. This is gonna now allow you to place all four of your vinyl colors in the four different corners of your mat. And what that will do is it will save you so much time of loading your machine and your mat, cutting it, unloading, rinse, and repeating four different times. Now you're just going to put your four pieces of vinyl onto one Cricut mat in each corner and then cut it all at once. This will save you a lot of hassle and time because the Cricut will do everything all at once for you and you applied all the vinyl all at once as well. Now you'll have your vinyl all cut out with four different colors and you'll be good to go. Every time I see someone cut paper on their Cricut, this is how I see it come up. They're constantly taking it and just peeling it back. And this is what happens. Do you see this, my friend? When you just simply peel your paper up from the mat, it will curl and it will do this. You do not want to do this. Stop doing that, but do this instead. So let's pretend we didn't do that. We're gonna apply it back onto our mat. We're going to just burnish this on like we would to apply. This is how easy it could be. Watch this. Flip your mat over. We're gonna do a technique called going with gravity. This is one of my favorite ones. And look, you're just going to peel this back. And just like that, your paper is now perfectly flat. It is crazy at what happens when you just simply go with gravity so your paper does not curl and you have great results every single time by peeling it up. And you want to make sure to go with gravity on your next paper project. All right, my friends, stop putting your felt directly onto your mat. Do this instead. Grab a piece of contact paper and you're simply going to want to take your piece of felt, you're going to, want to lay it flat, and then you're going to add a piece of contact paper to the back side of your felt. Now, the reason why we are going to do this is it's going to protect the lifespan of your mat. So this right here, you're going to place this down onto the back side of your felt, just like this. Now, notice the back piece of felt has no tack or no like pieces of the fabric. So guess what? When you put it on your mat, it is now touching the contact paper and not touching the felt. So this way, the mat is not going to have any type of felt on it because if you cut felt a lot, you know, after cutting two or three sheets, it kind of loses its tack. You have to clean it over and over. The contact piece will save you from having to clean your mat or get a new mat all the time. I wanna invite you to stop using Cricut brand heat transfer vinyl or vinyl in general because it does not perform as well as some of the leading competitors like Starcraft or Caesar Easy Weed. And with matless cutting, you're just paying more to use the material without a mat and it doesn't weed and apply as well as some of the others. So definitely check that out and you may just wanna stop using the Smart Vinyl for sure altogether so you have better results with other brands. A lot of us thought for a long time that aluminum foil would magically sharpen our blade, but you gotta stop thinking that. What it's actually doing is cleaning off any debris from your blade. Anything from the cardstock, the vinyl, the felt, all the different things we use with our blade. When you sharpen your blades with the aluminum foil, it's not sharpening. You're just simply cleaning off the debris so you have a better result. So you may see that it's going to physically cut better. It's actually just cleaning the blade, cleaning off all the debris. It's not actually sharpening it. So just make sure to know that your next time that you're going to clean your blade. If you're needing a truly sharper blade, go ahead and get a new one. They're very affordable and we have some linked for you so that you can get the best results with your Cricut at all times. And lastly, I want you to stop using vinyl to cut small little letters. As you can see with this example, the Cricut with regular vinyl 
does not cut small letters well, but you want to know what does? Heat transfer vinyl. Heat transfer vinyl cuts like butter, and when I weed it, you can actually see the letters, which is really, really nice. This will then go on really well and stay on for quite a while using heat transfer vinyl. And if you didn't know, you can apply heat transfer vinyl in many different ways on wood surfaces, metals, acrylics, and so much more. You're going to love to use heat transfer vinyl over vinyl. Just give it a shot. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, like the video, and be sure to subscribe for more DIY crafting videos with your Cricut. If you are still not getting the best results out of your Cricut, I wanna invite you to the Cricut Confidence Crash Course. It is an amazing webinar. Thousands of people have taken it, and I know you'll enjoy it too. It's the first link down below, and there's a special offer just for you there. And be sure to check out this video if you wanna continue on to YouTube and watch some other videos from us here at Makers Gonna Learn. I know you'll love that one too. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.